get this going. Cool. So I'm ready. Uh, this was really impromptu. Wasn't going to do it. Just happened because I read something that irritated the shit out of me. And I thought about it. What is uh, everyone here trying to do? Because I was looking at a comment, and I will say that my e eBay experiences were different from your eBay experiences, and it was still a bitch way back when. But typically, I've noticed this, and it, it's funny how it keeps happening. When I had entitlement mindset, I wanted people to help me. I actually would get upset if people wouldn't help me. I felt that folks who had done things in life, who had assets, information, that they should do something for me. I mean, it was indignant. I was like, help me. And the more I felt like that, the worse my life got. One day I woke up. It was that same day I got laid off for the last time. And... Yeah, that was the last time I've ever gotten laid off from every other job after that I had. I quit and moved on to something better. I stopped waiting for people to do for me, and I stopped expecting people to do for me and put the honest on myself. See, I had to learn how to sell myself on the dream of prosperity versus the dream of entitlement. And that's where many, many people are because I love YouTube. Love YouTube has done great stuff for me. And if I go to someone's channel and it isn't for me, I don't send them an email. It's like I look at it, now nah, this isn't for me, and I just bounce and I look for someone else. I look at my email box sometimes and feel like that people pour gas on the email, <laughs> throw some dynamite in there. It's just like, I mean, the stuff that I get, I, re I really should just do the email back. Uh, it is incredible, this hate and stuff I get. This like, you should do this, and you should praise God, and you should stop cussing. Hold on. Fuck! And um, it really works for me. Because, okay, one of the things is about creating a life of design and intent is you have the ability to live your life on your terms. My terms, my terms. They may not fit your life. They may not fit your tribe. And that's cool. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just cool because if your tribe doesn't work for me, I'm not going to try to get jumped in. But nor am I going to try to tr change your tribe. I am not because I've made a new stance on this thing. If you want to go to school and you want to get 50, 70, 80, a hundred thousand dollars in debt, have at it. Because I am studying what is happening in the world. You're studying stuff that doesn't work anymore. In some cases, some colleges have better curriculum than others. But what I am seeing is that there's going to be a greater group of people who are going to enter college, amass a huge amount of debt, and will still be working at Starbucks. You want to do it? Fine. That's your tribe. You believe in that? You go for it. Now, let's talk about why we are here. Everyone is here to learn how to sell shit. Now, when I created this channel, because this is going to go up on Glendon007, I created this channel to sell shit. That was the purpose, because someone left a comment it wasn't bad, but it's like, you know, you know, it's just like you're trying to sell your shit. Yes, I am trying to sell my shit. I want you to buy a book. I want you to buy a course. I want you to buy anything that I put out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beat myself on the chest. See, when you have pecs, you can do that. Yeah, I want you to sell shit. I'm unvarnished with that. I'm like, well, you know, I'm just here and I want to be your friend. Hey, can we go to the meadows and pet some bunnies? Or maybe we can go to the animal zoo. I'm not here for that. You know, I, I know some cool little kids in my neighborhood. If I wanted to go to the Amazon, they would be more fun because they're funny. But I don't know what happened where it became a crime to say, I have a business, I have products, and I want to sell them to you. I don't know when that happened. And uh, just let me check something. Was, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of ways for people to get in here. 
and ask questions, and I want to see if someone's over here, and no one's over here. But like I said, this is totally impromptu. It's mostly going to go up on YouTube. And if you're not in the, uh, I guess, the chat room, you cannot see what's going on. But essentially, that's what we're here. And I came up with this concept, and, you know, if anyone is uh, going to prove me wrong, I please do. Are you coming to this channel to learn how to get the skills to go into the marketplace and actually sell some shit? That's what you want to do. You want to get information that you can utilize to put money in your pocket. But I want to go a little further with it. How many of you are going to take that information and then go dr down the street, knock on your neighbor's door, and say, look, I just got this great stuff. I make a lot of money with it. Here, have it for free. Not many of you. Not, probably none of you. And I will say there's a group of people who are in the G-verse, um, a great group of people. Some people actually in one of the last webinars got like, it's been five years this guy didn't move me. There's a lot of people. Because in selling shit, you've got to understand what you're selling. And we talked about this in 30 Days to 2500. If you are selling some shit that you are not excited about, you are not going to do as well if you're selling some shit that you are excited about. And that's the thing. If you're struggling with eBay, you're struggling with Amazon, you're struggling with Etsy, chances are you're selling some shit that you don't like. Did you? It's like when you buy a storage unit and you sell all of the sexy, cool stuff, then you're down to the dregs and the stuff that only you can sell for a dollar or two dollars or five dollars. You're not really excited. You just look at that stuff and you're if you've got on eBay and you've got this stuff that you know is not really going to go for much money, what you do is you go out and you buy stuff, you sell the sexy stuff, and you let the shit pile up. And then you're like, you look at it and just go, oh, God, i got to list that. I don't want to list that. Man, I'm sick of this stuff. Then you go out and buy some more sexy shit, and you bring in some more non-sexy shit, and it starts piling up. And the next thing you know, your house looks like an episode of Hoarders. That happens because... You are trying to make money versus in creating value. When you're creating value, you're excited about the shit that you sell. I'm excited about the shit that I sell to you. Once again, I will say, hi, my name is Glendon Cameron. I have some shit that I want to sell to you, and I approve this message. If you cannot be that bold with your business, whatever you're selling, if you feel that you've got to kind of like tiptoe up behind the customer, kind of go behind their back and pat them on the, on the uh, shoulder, and then when they turn around, there's a contract for them to sign. You're selling the wrong shit. Or you're just a coward. I believe that everyone should have an outside sales job for two years. It will help you more than getting an MBA for your business. <laughs> it will help you so much more because you will have to deal with some real elements. You have to deal with people. You have to deal with money. You have to deal with product. You have to deal with customer service. You have to deal with so many things that you're just not going to learn in B school. <laughs> you're just not. Unless you go to a B school that has you start a business and do those things. You're just not going to learn. I was talking to this guy years ago, MBA. He was uh, looking for a job, struggling a little bit, had undergrad loans, student uh, and graduate school loans. And he was just talking. And we're talking about business, and we had this conversation, and he, this is the first time and last time I did this stuff. And he was just like, yo, I went to such a good school and everything, you know. And he, he, start, he got that superior chuckle. And I said, hmm. And I said, you know what, that's really good. That's good. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I dropped out of school. And then I pulled out my phone, went into my bank account, and said, I made that last month. What did you make? He turned red. He didn't have shit else to say. Because I don't care how fucking educated you are. If that does not serve you to the point where you're not on the street or living with your parents or you are somehow in a position of need and lack because you cannot support your own self, your education 
is actually a hindrance because it's created this financial obligation that creates stress, pressure, messes up your credit ratios. So it doesn't look too smart. And dude just sat there for five minutes and I just looked at it because I was waiting for him to say something. Then I said, this is what my business education does for me. Now, your formal education has you in a position where you're at home, your wife doesn't look at you like a man, you don't have a job, and you're probably depressed. And you're probably fucking some slut on the side to make yourself feel better because you cannot go out there and make any money like a real man. He just looked at me. I mean, just the look on his face. I was like, yeah, I am that guy. Yes, I am that guy. But the whole point is, if you learn how to sell some shit, really sell some shit, you're not going to worry about going hungry or starving or having these issues in your life because you can find some new shit to sell if the shit that you used to love goes away. You can just find some new stuff to sell. Once you become really good at the sales process, you will always have money. And that's one of the things that everyone's trying to leapfrog over. It's like, hey, I'm going to do a, you know, I'm just going to do content marketing. Content marketing is what I do. That's what the purpose of all these videos and everything. And it works. But at some point, you have to say, I want the money. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If you don't do it frequently, in the first few times, you're not getting the money. It's going to, it's because you, you know, in your mind, you're going to sound like this lion. I want the money, right? But really, what the customer is going to hear is, Excuse me, may I have the money? <laughs> They're going to hear that little mouse in you because you have never done that before. You've never done that before. So that creates a problem. That creates a problem. But essentially, Let's talk about how do you go from not being able to sell shit to actually selling shit, actually selling stuff, actually really being proud to say, hey, I sell shit. Stick your chest out or if you're a peacock, have your feathers up in the air. How do you get to that point? First of all, you've got to find some stuff that you like to sell. Notice I said like. I am not talking about you got to be passionate. Oh, God, you got you to wake up with it on your brain. No, no, I'm not, it doesn't have to be that involved. You just have to like it. First thing you start off with, stuff that you use. Uh, I am a BMW driver. If I was a BMW salesman, I could sell the shit out of those cars because I know them. I own them. I've had various models. I know quirks and all this stuff. And I could sit there and talk. And the guy who sold me mine was also a BMW. He was like, it does this, it does this, it does this. I have one. He knew how to sell me because he knew and liked the product. Many of you are out there trying to sell shit you don't like. And that's why when I get that question, and I get it frequently, hey, Glendon. What's the best hustle? You are looking at the money first and not your happiness, the enjoyment. Because one of the things about selling shit is it's a process. It's a process. And if you don't enjoy what you're selling, you don't, and like I said, enjoy and like, not passion. You just, I mean, are you passionate about hamburgers? No, you're just like, mm, that's a good hamburger. Like, you go about your business, and at lunch, you're, you're, you're like something else. You're not like, oh, yeah, I'm really. No, people who are passionate about hamburgers, they create hamburger joints. Or they create pizza joints. They, I was like, I kind of love pizza, but this pizza in this town sucks. I'm going to open up a pizzeria and make pizza that doesn't suck. Now, okay, those are the folks who are passionate about the stuff. They take it up a few levels. Now, if you like something, you know about it. And also, it, it comes across, and this has nothing to do with God, but it comes across as a spiritual self. Because when you like something, your body language changes, your speech, voice pattern changes, the way you talk about it. There are certain psychological and physiological things that happen when you're talking about something that you like. You ever seen a couple on the date, and they're sitting close to each other, so to speak, and they're, and they're like the V? That's what I call it. Look for this when you see people out. You'll see people that are sitting, and he or she is actually leaning away. And just sit there and watch for about four or five minutes, and you'll know. They're not they're, – the chicks, you know, unless he stinks, she's not just doing this. She doesn't like him, or he doesn't like her, and their bodies are repelling each other. This is something that happens naturally unless you're aware of it, and you're a mentalist, and you know this, and you can circumvent it by changing your body language, and you can do that.
because I used to do it to folks at storage auctions all the time. Actually, you know, if you watch the video, <laughs> I actually did that to someone. But essentially, your body language, you're going to be congruent with the sale. You're going to be congruent with the sale. You're going to, you like it, they feel you like it, and they don't feel like they're being snowed. They don't feel like they're being scammed because it's like, this person really likes it, which is why referrals are so strong. And really, in today's job market, unless you can get a referral, it's very, very hard to get those, those plum jobs. It's very hard because no one has time to train anymore. They need to know that you can come in there and facilitate change or, you know, if you're someone's family member. Nepotism is still running pretty low. I mean, nepotism is strong. What is it? Family of blood sticking in water? Hey, I mean, it is what it is. But if you want to really, really learn how to sell, look at everything that you have in your life that you like. Any products, like you, there's a certain blender you like, and do a, do a product review, contact the company, become an evangelist. You could maybe become an area rep. Who knows? Those are the kind of ways that you can sell some stuff that you like to sell and make money. Let's see what's going on here. What's up, Joseph Carducci, San Francisco of the 21st century? <laughs> oh, I think he was hurt. I did that shit because I got tired of people doing that shit to me. <laughs> Marie Brenner, yo, Glennon, I came for the title. Uh, my son, Cha-Ching, I dropped my son off to school. Make your own plum job. Uh, yeah, you. that's what you do. Because what I learned slowly is, you know, I'll, I'll tell you when I became a really good salesman for office furniture. A lot of office furniture to me is butt-ass ugly, uh, traditional stuff. I didn't like it. I just like, you know, and this is what you're going to see in judges' offices, uh, insurance companies. You know, it's probably changed. I like, uh, Herman Miller had this product called EcoSpace. It's futuristic, very modern, really, really trendy. Love that stuff. And that's Technion and Herman Miller Aeron's. I sold, now I couldn't sell Herman Miller because you had to be like a rep at a Herman Miller dealership, but Technion and some other stuff that was close to it but didn't have the price tag. I sold the shit out of that stuff because I loved it. I was like, this is good. And, you know, and I will walk in. And the thing is, if you're selling contract office furniture, if you have some interior design skills or background, it's going to help you tremendously. And what did I have? I took commercial art for four years. So I know how to put colors together. And I was like, well, these are your corporate colors. And the thing is, what you don't want to do is this. And then also consult. It's like, okay, do your clients come in the back? And I was like, no, okay, so what you're going to do is trick out your reception area and your conference room. And then that's where you're going to put a lot of money. And then you're going to put more money into you know, the call centers, whatever. We, we may do refurb, but you won't know it's refurb. Things like that. But when you're just selling some shit that you can't stand, if you have a job in sales and every day you don't want to go to work and you're looking like, oh, God, oh, God, I hope I get hit by a car today because you don't want to go to work, you're selling the wrong shit. <laughs> Louis has a rap song about that, Lean to the Left, Teresa Randolph. Uh, I just did this off the cuff. This wasn't planned. Once again, I am all about experimentation and exploration because, you know, I was like, I'll do one at 930 because, like I said, I saw that comment and I was just like, what the hell is this? I don't go to anyone's channel and it hit me. I'm an alien from the planet Spankable. That's what it is. But essentially, if you want to be a sales, and this is the thing, we're all salespeople. And a lot of people get really mad when I said, when you got married, you sold yourself to your wife. And it's like, no, it was romance. No, you said you put your best foot forward. You know, you comb your hair. You normally don't comb your hair. You put on the shoes. You normally walk around barefoot. Typically, you did something to sell yourself for her to say yes. And for you to want her, she sold herself to you. She, it was maybe makeup, hair. You had the pretty paint job to get down to the entire, and like, oh, wow, this V8 is a technological marvel or something like that. But essentially, we all sell all the time, but we call it different things. 
let's see, what, what, what is this? And to think, I was just rewriting my resume to incorporate all of my life experiences up to this point from last night to this morning. <laughs> I, I learned a long time ago, if you really want to sell stuff and sell well, you have to like, not love, not be passionate, but like, because like can turn into passion. But disgust rarely <laughs> turns into passion. And I, I see it like when I was shopping for a car. There was a guy, I could tell they hated their job. They didn't like what they were selling. And then there was always one guy in there, hey, how you doing? You know, he you just you could just see the happiness. Dude had the happy walk, the happy wave. He was freaking happy. I don't know if he was faking it, but People who like what they sell, sell more product. There's been studies done on this time and time again. When you know the product, when you like it, when you use it, these salespeople are far more effective than folks who are just there for the check. Way more effective. Way more effective. Because essentially, if you want to sell some stuff, like I give you a really simple one. Really simple, simple clue on how to sell more shit on eBay. First of all, before you go out and you buy all this shit and go, because this is where people go wrong. They buy stuff because it's cheap and it has potential value, right? What you do is you go to eBay and you find all the shit that's selling. Say, you know, MacBook Pros. You know that that's going to turn over really quick. If you put it up on Monday, you have a chance of selling it on Monday, maybe Wednesday. It's going to turn really, really quick. But you can't get them cheap because it's a MacBook Pro. But you can get them cheap enough where you can make an $80 to $100 profit, right? So what you do is you go out and you start looking for them. You learn everything you can about them. Then you find broken ones. So you're selling new ones, right? Or Well, not new ones. You're selling used ones, refers, whatever you get your hands on. And then you go out and get all the, blo the broke ones because, see, there's something a lot of folks don't know. You see this? This keyboard? Okay, well, pretend this is a MacBook Pro keyboard. There are some people who fuck these up and they need keys, and you can sell them for seven, ten bucks a piece. So you count the keys. There's quite a few of them, right? So you go out and you find a broke, when get it for next to nothing. So you're selling MacBook Pros where you're only making like 70, 80 bucks profit, and then you know you're selling these keys where you're making like a 90 percent. You know you're making shit like nine dollars profit. You know you, this keyboard might get you two hundred dollars. Might get you 200 bucks. Then it's like, oh, what? Well, oh, you need to start getting magic mouse. A lot of times people think these things are broken, but uh, after your battery's been in for a while, the connectors kind of get a little screwy. So what you do is you put some paper or something in there to make sure that the connection happens and it stops turning on and off. A lot of people think these things are broke when they're not. Now, how do I know this? Because I used to sell the Mac shit on Craigslist. <laughs> this is how I know all this stuff. And I was making an additional 900 to 1,000 bucks a month. Just playing around because I know the product. I use the product. Once again, it goes back to what I was saying. Sell some stuff that you know about. Sell some stuff that you like. Stop selling shit you can't stand. And that's what happens to a lot of resellers. That's the stand. Teresa, hey, I'm the chick that asked about podcasting on the Facebook page. What do you think about creating a podcast about something you like and promoting the stuff you sell, either directly or indirectly? I think it's a great idea because you said the key words, creating a podcast about something that you like. Because when you like it and you have to deal with the yard birds and the bullshit, it makes it so much easier to just keep pushing through. But when you're already disgusted by what you're selling, and then the bullshit comes, and then the yard birds come, it is just so easy to just say, fuck it. <laughs> just fuck it. I'm out of here. Because you're, you're, you're in the wrong spot. I mean, I don't know if I can show you this. Uh, actually, I can't. I have to do it a certain way. But I did not like YouTube when I first started, but I liked the benefits. It was part of something. It was one of the shitty things which actually became, and this is why I said, you know, something you like, you can turn into a positive if you work at it. I have to do it like this, but... Yeah, so we'll come back. I had to play with this. 
and I forgot I need to. Bear with me for a second. All right, here we go. So we will be able to do that. I will show you. I'm going to explain something to you, Lucy. I'm explaining something to you. Okay. All right. Now, you're looking at this. I have 1,079 videos. This is not all the videos I have. Um, actually, going off the top of my head, between the stuff I have in other places, I have 1,500 videos. 1,500 videos. Now, I can easily make another 1,500 just off the stuff I'm working on. This is the thing that happens when you are doing something you like. You could power through it because, you know, YouTube at one point was very, very frustrating for me. And part of the reason it was frustrating for me because I was looking at it the wrong way. Uh, you know, going back to Teresa's question about the podcast. If you get to something you really, really like and you're not and like also just to let people know. I did not make money directly from YouTube for almost two years. I made all of my money from promoting my products. That's why, you know, I wrote the book, How to Make Killer Money from YouTube, because all of the books out there are like AdSense, Join the Network. I didn't do any of that stuff. And as a consequence, I am making a full time living from this. When you're part of a network, it means you're part of a group of many people. And yes, there's power in there, but there's also dilution. There's a lot of dilution. But, you know, just to give you a tip on the podcast, before you do anything with the podcast, anything, you sketch out your themes. You come up with a name. You come up to, and also, you know, depend on your podcast. So, like, say you're going to do a podcast, and I'm going to pick on you since you're a woman, that you're going to do a podcast about high heel shoes. You would create a Facebook page, and you would create a uh, Pinterest page and then you would do the tweet because what high heel shoes women got to see the shoes oh look those shoes are so cute I mean and then you know you would like reach out to people and it's like look I'm doing a podcast on shoes I am a high heel fashionista and then you would do a blog with you in the shoes and you, you but before you start you know creating domain names you would create the theme you would create the names you would do everything I did not do with Glenda 007 that's why I can tell you how to do it and it would come across as such a polished and wonderful thing. So, and you know, you can do shoe reviews. And this is one thing. Uh, I'm going to show you this guy if I can. This just kind of blew my mind. Let's see, what is it? Fashion. Ah, if I can find this guy. Uh, it would be, nah, I can't remember him, but he's a guy in Germany, and he loves fashion, right? And he started blogging on YouTube about fashion. I cannot remember his name and subscribe to him, so, but it escapes me. I can't find it at the moment. This dude goes to Fashion Week now. His channel's blown up. He's been in all of the press in the UK. You know, he's been over here. I think his name is Manny. And essentially, by blogging, vlogging about fashion, he created a career for himself because he really likes this stuff. He re he doesn't like, oh, you know, I'm just, oh, shit, let me make another fashion video. No, he, he just really, really likes it. I mean, it, it's I watched him just blow up, and that's another thing. If you have a keen sense for fashion, it is one of the most lucrative things to get into but you cannot fake it. <laughs> there's you know, there's a big difference between uh, let's see I'm gonna try to find this guy for y'all because it is uh, he's he should be easy to find and I can't find him. I don't know what it's bothering me. I am bothered by this. I am totally bothered by this. Let's see. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I just can't find it. Because I have not been researching stuff on YouTube like uh, I normally do. But, you know, there there's a lot to that. 
Joseph Carducci, I'm interested in doing some sales letter writing, but I'm having trouble finding where product and websites created hang out to sell this service. Any ideas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to do, let's see. I'm going to take you a place that's really good for this type of stuff. Because what you're going to have to do, you cannot come in and sell with this group. What you're going to have to do is, and I will put that up there for everybody. You have to do this. if you, Because what you're talking about is writing copy. That's what it's called, copywriting, not sales letter writing. So you want to go here to Copy Blogger, just go through the site, come in on stuff, start hanging out because everyone goes here that knows how to do copy and the thing is follow these people, follow people in their tribe because there's a whole world to this and just go on Twitter, get their own, uh, and that's where you're going to find a lot of people. You go to their Twitter, let's see. And you will see, look at people who are following them, and you will see people who are doing the same thing, and you will see, they got a Google Plus page too, but Twitter, you will, everyone that's following them is interested in what you're talking about. And they have 11,000 followers, so you would go to their Twitter page and start communicating with them, because... Part of this is dealing with this online crowd, which goes to the reason that I decided to do this damn hangout. Everybody is so used to getting stuff for free that they forget that there's nothing in life for free because you're going to pay either in cash, sweat equity, time. There is a, there's a payment for everything. There, there's a payment for everything. You, you have to be. There's nothing in life that's free, and it just throws people off. But you know, it's just uh, it, it bothers me when I get those comments because if you go to my YouTube channel and if you start from 2009 and watch the earlier videos, and there's about 300 of them, and app, apply yourself, you'll make money. But what? But once again, with entitlement mindset, people don't want to do research or use Google they like here it is here's this because you know I put up a lot of videos about eBay and you know I you know I'm, my, my whole deal is not to do anymore because I'm, I'm just in the way from that and many people it's like well you know say get the fuck off eBay where are we gonna go hello start your own damn business start your own damn website start your I'm like hello <laughs> I mean, they're like her and Mellers, hello. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it just cracks me up because I don't know what happened with our educational system, but if some shit ain't working, you move to the left. If the shit ain't working, you move to the right. Now, I will say this, and this is not to bash Amazon or to... I just don't like the way that they do certain things, so I'm not there. I don't hate them, and I'm not going to write them a letter. Yeah, I mean, copy blogger is a. All right, once again, see this free registration? If you do this stuff right here and you go through the course four or five times, you will learn so much. You will learn so much. And, but the thing is, it's not free. It's going to take your time, attention, and a level of dedication that people don't want to put forward because this is how they make their money. They tell you what the stuff is, they give you a lot of stuff for free. But as uh, someone said in the podcast, people are just not going to do it. And, that, and the people like they don't want to do it, they're going to pay them to do it. And that's how they get their people. That's how they make their money. Because they know. They can uh, definitely say that um, this is how to do it. This is what it takes. All of this stuff that I have learned how to do online, I didn't know how to do I didn't know how to do it in 2009. I had no clue. I was just like... <sighs> you know, um, I got to get to work. So I went here, went to Copy Blogger, I followed a lot of YouTubers, and 
go look on YouTube for things that you like and just watch a bunch of videos. And do not go by view count. Watch. There are people who are brilliant on YouTube, and their videos have 80, 90, 100 views. They're brilliant, but they don't know how to market themselves. And that's why. But the information is great. There's a few people I follow, and I will not tell you who they are. No, I'm just kidding. I can't remember at the moment. But these folks are awesome. They give uh, great, great information, and it is awesome what they do for you. So you got to find your tribe. You know, I use the word "fuck," "damn." I've said pussy, shit, and some other stuff. And there are the people, oh, God, he used it properly. <laughs> He's hurting my tender rabbit feelings. And I'm not for everybody. And I'm, I'm, I accept that, and it's, it's fine. Uh, but, you know, there's other people out there. There's other people who can teach you, and just go there. And stop writing me all these damn, you need to stop using fuck. You know, if you keep using fuck, you're not going to be successful. I use fuck probably in my second or third video in 2009. I will probably hit 4 million views this year. Probably. So, I don't know about that. But, seriously. <laughs> Enough of the fuckery. Oh, damn. I did it again. Let's see. Christopher. I have a turnkey website selling a consumable product. There are thousands of us to have this site, but I want to stand out. Should I create my own? Okay, let's talk about turnkey stuff. Let's get out of there. Okay. Let me just peep the game. Let me just lift the, the let me lift the hem of the dress of the skirt of the game. I've got it up. You see the legs? They're not shaved. But take multi-level marketing. I used to be into that, and I went to several events, and this was a long, long time ago. It slowly dawned on me that the only people that were making money were at a certain level because even if you came in and only stayed for a week, they made money. If you stayed in for a few months, they even made more money. If you are here, you know, it's harder to get here because this is where the money is. The money's up here. It's not down here. The money's not down here. The money's up here. That's why you got to get to a certain level. Well, with these turnkey websites, whoever set up the turnkey website Say your website only sells four products, right? And as you said, there's hundreds of you with those sites, right? So if all of y'all were just garbage, that's four or five hundred sales a month for them. So essentially, yes, create your own site. Because if you're doing the turnkey site, because this is me, I don't know, it may, it may not be you, but this is me. When I go to a website and I see a template that I've seen a thousand times, I typically am turned off. Because I know this is a package deal. This is why I try not to use that stuff. Sometimes it happens. Um, I am using a template with uh, the with uh, the webinar thing, but since they're brand new, it's not all over the world. But essentially, I try not to use that stuff because you do the reverse of what you want, which is to stand out. You you're just like everyone else, and that's just a problem. Um, uh, Louis the Seller. Sometimes I want to advertise my stories on YouTube, but as you know, there's a lot of stupid, hateful, vindictive people on YouTube. Should I worry about this, and what's the best way to handle this? This is what you do, because I know exactly who the fuck you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. And let me tell you how stupid they are. You go ahead, and you create a brand new YouTube channel. You don't even have to show your face because you want you know if you want to you can't. You do not put Louis the seller. You just create a brand new channel, showcase your eBay stuff. Now, work on the products. You know if you're selling Louis Vuitton purses, hey, this is Louis Vuitton purse review and link to your store. Take yourself out of the equation, and those motherfuckers won't find you because if they if you go Louis the seller on eBay. You will get hate. You will get people buying your products, not paying, playing games because there's some nasty little sorry little bitches out there. Uh, there are so many people 
who have experienced total fuckery because they had the I'm not going to say poor judgment because you don't think anyone's going to come after you and try to mess up your money but it's it's amazing. I've had people do similar things to me. I've had people just say all kinds of horrible stuff that wasn't true. And you just have to ride it out. But create a separate channel, brand it. You can show your face in there, but make sure you put up a thumbnail. And typically, if you concentrate on the products, they're not going to find you. It's because uh, I've helped someone do this. And uh, she does her videos. She links it up because she has a very specialized product. And um, no one's found her channel, and she hasn't had any eBay disruption because I know of several people. Uh, someone actually in the group was talking about one of his. Uh, he, it was just two times this thing was bought by someone with virtually no feedback, and they both said the thing and didn't pay. Fought hard to get it, beat out other people. So yeah, typically. All right. This is not going to be like forever and ever because uh, like these impromptu hangouts and there will be more. I'm going to keep it at 30 minutes because I know people are not going to watch everything for an hour, but people watch for 30 minutes. So I want to say thanks to everyone that just showed up because I just kind of popped this thing out like top of my head. And uh, I will see you folks on the good side.